More cyclone possibilities across the Indian Ocean, along with Cyclone Iali on today's Tropical Weather Bulletin. And now the latest around the wide world of tropics. Tropical Weather Bulletin for May 18th. Cyclone Iali is still pushing itself along northwards now mainly in the uh, southwest Indian Ocean and it is heading slowly towards the equator. Uh, other systems are active now as well and we have several areas of interest across the world which we're going to be diving into in just a sec. In the Atlantic it's 14 days until hurricane season, just two short weeks until we begin and nothing going on in the tropical zones right now but there is some severe weather off the Gulf Coast of the United States, I've been saying that a lot recently, um, but nothing in the deep tropics. In the Eastern Pacific it's now day four of hurricane season and there is still an area of interest that we've tagged at 10%, the western system there, the eastern one we have given up on and there is no model support for either of these systems anymore. Uh, so it's just going to be watching to see what happens with them but it looks like the answer is nothing. In the Western Pacific, we're giving a 20% chance now for the area of interest that has been uh, wandering around the Micronesian Islands with low model support, but it has increased just a little bit this morning. In the North Indian Ocean, we're now giving a 10% chance to a new area of interest that is starting to get picked up by the models as well. That's the one we've been watching the last few days that looked like it would become a very large tropical cyclone. Regardless of its size, uh, there is a non-zero chance of it becoming a cyclone in the next seven days. In the southwest Indian Ocean we have Cyclone Iali and a dark horse there near the equator, 40% chance now for an area of interest that could uh, spin up uh, rather quickly. If it does form it won't last very long but it could be a bit of a surprise going on there, moderate chance. Here's Cyclone Iali right now which itself is getting quite far north, it's only at about 6 degrees south now. It's 392 kilometers from Isle Saint-Pierre on the Farquhar Island group. It's 417 from Grand Terre in the western Seychelles, 442 from Alphonse Island, 545 from Desroches further towards the uh, capital Victoria and 1036 kilometers from Mombasa in Kenya. That will be way off towards the northwest on this map. So the storm's gradually moving away from those small islands. Here's the eastern Pacific though on the satellite imagery and you can see those two areas of interest in the eastern Pacific National Hurricane Center. I think it's still giving them both 20% but uh, it really is fading fast for these two systems. Uh, there's a wider shot of them as well on the geocolor imagery. Uh, a little bit of rotation on the right hand side one and the one on the left not so much but that's the one that has the better model support so uh, go figure I suppose. Uh, but but nonetheless, neither of these systems look like they're going to develop now, which is certainly a far cry from what we were looking at last week. Here's the two systems in the southwest Indian Ocean. Iali looking quite good today, actually, although it is still nearly exposed. The circulation's well off to the northwest of that big burst of convection, uh, not where you might think when you look at that convection bulking up, so it's still being sheared. That system on the right-hand side as well looking quite decent. We'll look at it in a moment, but here's Iali on the uh, visible satellite imagery. If you look carefully at the low-level clouds, the rotation is right towards the top right there, which is where the low-level circulation is, but convection still blowing up quite Quite nicely there over the course of the last 12 hours looks like it's just finished another burst and it might be dying down a little bit before maybe we get a new one it really was on the ropes yesterday uh, but it is looking quite a bit better today and that's why we're giving 45 miles per hour now here's the system uh, further east in the South Indian Ocean and uh, these floaters are using Himawari so it's going to be very close to the edge of coverage but you can still see some convection blowing up. There are signs of rotation as well uh, but certainly nothing clear yet. Uh, definitely uh, winds going in almost all direction near the center of this system right now. Uh, so 
a little bit further and we may start to see a tropical cyclone forming there. Now this is the Western Pacific in Vest, if you can see it. What exactly are we looking at? I don't know. Uh, but there is thunderstorms blowing up along the northwest there towards Palau and again towards the southeast. I imagine if it had a center it would be somewhere in the middle. Uh, but it's really not looking very good at all on satellite imagery. And whether that 20% chance comes from this or whether it's a new system that forms again further east and quite a lot of that going on in the west and Pacific lately we'll have to wait and see on that but once again models have been pretty flaky so I'm not sure what to make of it now this is the cell over the southern United States just looking at some of the non-tropical stuff here and you can see that's causing some real severe storms possible uh, and flash flooding along a lot of those uh, southern counties there um, in the southern states Moving off towards the east, and I think that we have another slight risk in effect today, if not an enhanced, uh, quite a lot of those in the next few days. Now this is the Central American region where you can see a few little storms blowing up away from the actual disturbance on, on the left. And this is the uh, East Atlantic uh, showing very little going on so far off Africa. Uh, obviously things will get a little bit busier there later on. Western Pacific view, another quick view there. A rain over some parts of the eastern Philippine Islands and over some of the southern islands. And this is the Bay of Bengal region. Uh, lots of little storms along the east coast of India through Bangladesh and way out towards Vietnam. Storms everywhere except for a few spots. Now this is the sea surface temperatures and in the eastern Pacific they're continuing to increase just a few 26 degree areas now extending into the Gulf of California there and the Atlantic also looking very good the uh, Bay of Campeche starting to get up those temperatures now as well and the southern coast of Cuba getting up towards 30 degrees Celsius. Uh, similarly over the Leeward Islands actually temperatures looking good there as well 28 degrees quite clearly. Western Pacific also getting very warm in the South China Sea particularly, a few hot spots again there over 30 degrees towards 32 and warm temperatures extending up the Ryukyu Islands now as well. Bay of Bengal is still roasting in the eastern part of the bay especially and warm waters extending all the way across the coastlines now sustained 28 to 30 degrees Celsius. Southwest Indian Ocean where Iali is right now, temperatures are warming a little bit so that will help that convection just for a little bit longer. And that other little system, uh, temperatures are probably around 28 degrees Celsius north of the British Indian Ocean territory. And this is the Australian region, we're still looking at a few spots there of 28 degrees Celsius waters, 29 even, uh, mainly off Darwin and extending towards Western Australia, uh, the Gulf of Carpentaria now cooling, and in the South Pacific, uh, New Caledonia just about holding on to one or two areas of 26 degrees Celsius waters, but in general it is falling away. And compared to average, this is what things are looking like right now. Still some cool spots there in the eastern Pacific, in the equatorial zone and in the subtropics. In the Atlantic, it's well above average in the main areas and in the uh, western Gulf, up to 3 degrees above average, maybe even 4 in one or two spots. And the Bay of Bengal, eastern part of it, looking very warm compared to average as well. Southwest Indian Ocean, a few spots there too, where these storms are right now. Looking at the South Pacific, we've still got a lot of oceanic heat content active, uh, although it is starting to really fade away from the actual tropical hotbed. Uh, looking at the Eastern Pacific, there's still a few spots there. It's actually died down slightly, but we'll probably get another pulse of oceanic heat content, which will push it onwards in the near future. Western Pacific really looking hot as we get towards, well, whenever we get the first storm of the season. And in the Atlantic, uh, still very good around Jamaica, that's where it's at right now, but a few other spots south of Federico and east of the uh, Leeward Islands as well, uh, getting some higher amounts of OHC. So let's check the computer models for the next five days. This is the GFS showing Iali there on the left hand side, moving up towards the northwest and its remnants uh, continuing beyond the equator most likely uh, and affecting the weather in Somalia and probably Kenya as well. And looking towards the right hand side there, there's that other system that's moving on towards the right, uh, possibly becoming a brief tropical cyclone, a small one, probably a very sheared one, uh, and one that won't be very pretty to look at, but I tell you what, it'll be about two or three degrees south, really close to the equator. Now this is the North Indian Ocean on the other side, 
and you can see that eventually we get this system really starting to form. It's not supported by any other models yet. I've got to put that in right now. But the GFS is supporting this storm forming within the five day period and becoming a substantial tropical cyclone. So there it is. That's why we've given it 10% forming right in the middle of the Bay of Bengal and starting to make way towards India. And in the Western Pacific, watching 93W, or whether it's that, or whether it's a different system that forms off to its right through the Micronesian Islands, the GFS reckons uh, is back on board with something forming within the five-day period. There it is, although other models are still skeptical. And I tell you what, I'm very skeptical with the GFS after what happened last week. So we'll keep watching this very closely, uh, but at the moment, chances remain low. Let's take a look at the rainfall expectations across this whole region in the southwest Indian Ocean where we've got very high amounts of rain in a few spots there. One area off Madagascar and then another area uh, towards where Iali is right now. Up to 22 inches in an area there off Madagascar, probably non-tropical as well. And 26 inches from 93S way out there over the Indian Ocean. I don't think there's any land masses under there, but still extremely high amounts of rain over 500 millimeters. One or two spots near Ayali right now getting up to 12 inches, 300 millimeters, and nine, to nearly 10 inches there in Kenya, interestingly, and around 250 millimeters there. I don't know if that's associated with Ayali or not. In the medium range, you can see that storm making landfall in India further north, but I just want to point your attention first of all to another system down to the south, to, to the south there. That's related to Invest 93S, and it tries to become a tropical cyclone a second time. And then there's this one in India there, uh, almost to hurricane equivalent strength. It stalls along the coast as it makes landfall just south of Visakhapatnam, and then starts to move inland and uh, struggles quite quickly there. And this Western Pacific storm, the GFS, back to its old tricks of developing another major typhoon out of it, uh, just as it's done so many times lately. There it is once again, and it's another recurvature off towards the northeast. That once again is day 5 to 10. Uh, obviously stronger storms favour a recurve, weaker storms favour land interaction with the Philippines. Scan the barcode and that will take you through to the Force 13 merch store where you can take a look of all of our items as well as our full season and individual storm animations on request. Also our still waiting for Hone t-shirt still available and when that storm forms we'll be doing a live stream in a wiener costume. In the silly range then, looking at the South Indian Ocean, we're still looking at this other system. This is what's left of 93S, or the continuation of it. Not sure if it is exactly the same system, but it comes from its energy. And guess what? The GFS is developing it into another tropical cyclone once again. So it's almost done a full loop of the basin there. And uh, the cheek of it going on to affect the northern tip of Madagascar once again, just like so many other storms have this year. And storms have formed close to there like the last two uh, so that's into June there that's first and second of June uh, that tropical cyclone I don't know about that there's this Western Pacific storm moving off towards the northeast at a rapid pace uh, passes by the main part of Japan thankfully and way out over the North Pacific of course this is still very speculative and probably won't happen I would still say at this point uh, but just to show you that's the long range on the GFS right now with this storm uh, parading across the North Pacific there and eventually heading up all the way back to North America. There it is, plunging into the Pacific Northwest at the end. Well, let's take a look at what happened on this day and it was a much more active day even now. Uh, we had what was left of Tropical Storm Alma in the Eastern Pacific. We had Cyclone Ikonjo in the South Indian Ocean, another one a uh, little bit of an anomaly, and Typhoon Mariam, which was the feature on this day in 1990, a Category 2 peak and was uh, swiftly recurving northeastwards, and I think it eventually headed into Taiwan, if I'm not mistaken, but it, at this point it definitely was moving northeast. That was the strongest storm on this day in recent times. So let's take a look at today then. The first name on the Atlantic naming list this year is Alberto in the Eastern Pacific. It's Aletta. We thought we had it, but we 
don't, and in the Central Pacific it is still Hone. In the Western Pacific the next name is Iwinya still, and in the North Indian Ocean it will be Remal. 17 storms so far this year around the world. In terms of accumulated cyclone energy we're about 42% below average for this point in time. So. There's going to be some catching up to do somewhere. Robin's next in the Australian region, Jeremy in the Southwest Indian Ocean, and Pitta in the South Pacific. That's all from today's Tropical Weather Bulletin. We'll be back again tomorrow. Become an ultimate fan today.